real lives, and real testimonies to bring inspiration and hope to the world. There's so much more to the Christian life than just being married. There's not an official age when I decided to be a virgin. We're talking about biblical manhood plus fighting temptation. Welcome to Crystal's Corner. Hello and welcome to Crystal's Corner. I'm your host, Crystal Oji, and today we have Miss Naturally Mary on the show, who is also known as Mary Taylor. Hi guys. Thank you so much for being here, y'all. Oh, she is a YouTube celebrity, so oh, go no, check no, her no, out. No, she's, talking about. she's a YouTube celebrity, y'all. So also for all my YouTube junkies, go and subscribe. Go watch her videos, y'all. She's awesome. And I'm just glad to have her here today, really. I'm glad to be here. So today we're gonna be talking about purity and waiting. That's major. Yeah. That's major. For sure. That's each. <laughs> On the last season of Crystal's Corner, I had Dozy Zima share a story about being a virgin at the age of 26. And today I wanted to bring Miss Naturally Mary on the show to share her story about being a virgin at the age of 31. I'm actually 32 now. She's 32 now, y'all. <laughs> She's 32 now, y'all. So let's dig deeper into this and learn more about why. Why, why, why. Let's talk about it. Okay, so... Hi guys, <laughs> and I have a video on my channel that actually goes in depth about my journey, but I grew up in the church and with that my beliefs and morals and everything are centered around just growing up in the church, you know, coming from that background and I actually had an, a situation that I talk about on my channel where my sister, my older sis, oldest sister actually passed away mm -hmm. um, because she got pregnant and just different things like that. It, there were complications in her pregnancy and so because mm -hmm. of that tragic situation that just furthered my desire to actually wait until marriage. My sister and I actually have a twin sister. Wow. For those who don't know. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I have a twin sister. Her name is Martha. Wow. Which is Mary and Martha. That's yes. so cute. <laughs> yeah, so we both at an early age had had conversations about waiting. But of course, after such a tragic thing happening with our oldest sister, mm -hmm. we decided for sure we're actually going to wait because that was like really scary. Yeah. And of course, we know that her having sex and everything didn't actually cause it, but just that happening mm -hmm. and you know just going down that path and just some of the decisions that she was making and things like that it just kind of helped us with our journey and so at 32 I'm still waiting um, I am with a person that I know is the one for me but um, we're still waiting for marriage we've actually taken Kitson off the table as well oh. so not only am I waiting to have sex but with the person I feel like is the one. Wow. We took it a step further and we're saying we're not going to oh, kiss wow. as well. So you talked a little bit about, you know, your decision to wait because of your sister. So when did it go from because of sister to because of Jesus? Well, um, initially it was always because of Jesus. We grew up in the church and so our parents just instilled in us, mm -hmm. you know, that there are certain things that you should not do. And Having a coming from a PK family, mm -hmm. you know, our father was a pastor and everything, and coming from that background, most PKs, well, I guess I shouldn't say most, mm. I guess we have this, <laughs> there's this negative connotation that comes with PKs, mm. and um, with that, most people think, you know, once they get out of, you know, their parents' house, mm -hmm. they're going to go crazy and all that, and all those different things, but with my sister and I, we just always had a desire to do things God's way, mm -hmm. and so... Um, we just made the decision really early, just wanting to just please God. And we felt like that was a way to honor God with our bodies. Mm. And, you know, our sister's tragedy only further that whole decision. So it was always a God thing. Yeah. And in high school, people would always like kind of tease us or, you know, kind of say little things because everybody's talking about sex. Even in middle school, people were talking about sex and we were always the girls that are like, oh, they're the virgins. But we were never really ashamed of it. Yeah. And they looked at us like, what is going on with you guys? Like, I was, I would literally say, I would shout it from the mountaintop because oh, wow. I was so proud of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I didn't see it as something that I should have this negative outlook about. I felt like it was something that should be celebrated. Yeah. And so with my journey with YouTube and just, um, and now feeling like I'm developing my voice in the past, I have a twin sister, as I mentioned, and it was a situation where I was like really shy. Aww. She was the more outgoing one. And that's usually the case with twins. You always have one that's like super outgoing and talkative. And then there's one that's really reserved. Yeah, I was that more reserved one. And 
her husband actually told me, she's like, he's like, you know, Mary, you're going to have a ministry where, you know, you empower oh. women and all those different things. And I'm like, you're yeah, right. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. And, you know, it just happened where, yeah. you know, God has been using me in that way to kind of share my story and just having that desire to keep myself. I know I could not have done it on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a God thing because there are so many moments where, you know, it could have happened. Yeah. But I always consider those around me and their journey and just be wanting to be something different that people can look to and see an example of someone who chose to do it God's way. And although it was difficult because I never tried to leave that out, you know, some people put on this perspective or this way about them where they um, act as though it's an easy journey and you know I'm just so super saved and yeah. I you know <laughs> super saved it's just really easy it's not a challenge for me but it was a challenge you know there were some situations where it got a little close but I thought about all the people who were looking to me mm -hmm. to be that example and also I, I would think about my daughter my future yeah. daughter being able to say to her you know I waited mommy did this so you can do it yeah. and she have a blueprint of what that looks like so yeah. And just having a realistic model like Absolutely. my mom waited so I can too and I think that oftentimes people don't normally hear the stories of women who passed the age of 30 mm -hmm. that have waited because yeah. it seems as if like once you hit 25 26 27 that's your benchmark like that's where it's off you know so I think just having you as a woman who's willing to speak up about your willingness to wait and to remain a virgin until marriage is so monumental for this conversation. You Absolutely. Know? Um, so what difficulties? Of course, there's going to be that struggle, that tussle um, with waiting and remaining a virgin. What difficulties have you faced and encountered along this journey? Uh, first off, like my sister and I, we were very, very close. And so when she got married, it was just a major struggle for me because it was like we identified ourselves with, you know, Mary and Martha. Like we were just mm -hmm. attached. So disconnecting the two and just our identities and now having to figure out who I am mm -hmm. apart from her was a challenge. And she also waited. She was 21 when she got married. So um, that was something. And then after her journey, it was like I always desired to be married. And I yeah. thought I would be married at 25. And it's easier yeah. at 25 to save yourself. You know, and then yeah. as time progresses, you know, your hormones and stuff just mm -hmm. increase. And it's like, oh, my God, <laughs> just help your girl because it's a lot. <laughs> But um, just in those encounters, I'd always talk to my partners, whoever I was having a relationship with. I haven't had many um, relationships. I've probably had like three or four in my life. But I would make my partners aware, you know, this is something before I even got into a relationship, I would share with them, you know, this is my journey. I'm not willing to compromise on this. But in moments where, you know, the kissing and stuff would yeah. happen, you know, once you're kissing, it's like, oh, they it's like a start, slippery slope. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You start with, you know, the kissing and then it's like the you know, touching, touching and, and, then, and stuff. And it's like <laughs> and it's the sex and it's the kids. Yeah. And then you find yourself like, oh my God, like what is going on? And so in those moments, it you know we desire to have pleasure. And so mm -hmm. in those moments, it's like, okay, this is going a little far. Yeah. And then you have these conversations and then it becomes this repeated conversation. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, your conviction mm -hmm. becomes something that you really have to listen to. The voice yeah. of God you have to listen to in those moments. And if there was a time where I remember I was kind of like ignoring the voice of God. Like, no, I like, you know, yeah. I like the kissing. I like, you know, the yeah. stuff. And, you know, just a part of me was like, you know, why did you start this journey? Mm -hmm. You have to go back to why you started. And going back to that really helped me to kind of um, gain insight on what I needed to do moving mm -hmm. forward. And if it was that I needed to end that relationship, yeah. that's what happened. I literally was like, no. Yeah. I think we dated for probably like a week or so. And it was like, I got really comfortable with this guy like mm -hmm. really early. And I thought, you know, that meant we're meant for each other. Yeah. If you get close to the person, you can tell them almost everything. You become, you know, best friends yeah. and all. You think, oh, yeah. But no, God was like, he's not the one for you. Listen to the voice of God. <laughs> when he speaks, listen. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? We have to end this relationship. This can't go anywhere. Yeah, that's that's real. I think that a lot of times as, us as women, we struggle with that attachment. Because Absolutely. I know we're more so like that intimate, sharing our feelings, yeah. building relationships off of that. And forgetting that, no, 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 no. If he doesn't love the Lord well and can't honor me well with my decision to remain pure or for us to remain pure, then I may have to dip. You know what I mean? In other terms, it can be really different whereby a guy isn't fighting as hard as he should be and you are kind of struggling to true. keep up with that. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be the, 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 um, the leader of purity in a relationship because us as women, we desire intimacy. We desire that cuddling and it's like, 
we can't do that because obviously it'll lead to the slippery slope of potentially having sex and then yeah. of course dishonoring God and of course you know, just other stuff like that. So I think that's pretty, pretty major, especially for you. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of women struggle with society's views on being a virgin or even talking about virginity. Um, how did you remain focused? How did you remain um, steadfast on what you wanted to maintain in your life? Uh, as I talked about earlier, like the importance of identity, it's so important that you know who you are in Christ because when others have their views and perspectives on their different things, you won't be sh easily shaken or moved by those things. So because I knew who I was, it's like, you know, where you see on TV and just like Instagram, you see all this stuff where, you know, sex and stuff is yeah. just like celebrated. I wasn't somebody that was just going to cave on what I believe in. I'm like, this is celebrated. So let's celebrate abstinence. Yeah. Let's celebrate purity. Let's talk about that. Like, uh, that's, that was my perspective. Yeah. I'm not going to be quiet about my journey. You know, if this is something that people are highlighting and it's just constantly, you know, showcased, then purity should also be something that's showcased. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about doing it the right way. Yeah. And it's not to um, come down on anyone who has mm -hmm. gone down the path of, you know, having sex because I know. And I'm so glad I had those encounters where it was close because from my background, and I'll share this on my channel, um, just growing up, you can be conditioned when you're raised in the church that, you know, certain people are heathens mm -hmm. or like they're sinners and, you know, you just have this judgmental view of others. And that was something that was projected on me as from an early age. Mm -hmm. And so as I grew and I learned the heart of Christ and truly knew his character, I understood that, you know, just as easily as those people fail, I could, I could absolutely yeah. fall. And so although I, you know, had those encounters and may not have handled things the best way, you know, I'm glad that I did because prior to that I had never had an encounter where it was yeah. like hey, it was a close call or anything. And I was like, wow, like this is easy. Mm -hmm. Falling into temptation is very easy. Yeah, and so cool. deciding not to um, and being able to be a light and also be able to share that transparent mm -hmm. part of it that it's hard and yes, I get weak as well. Yeah. That's the most empowering part for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Not just to be able to say I'm a virgin and I'm like holier than thou, yeah. but rather I say God saved me yeah. and God kept me and it is hard and yeah. I understand your challenges yeah that's good that's really good um, what advice would you give to women who are waiting or kind of have fallen in that in that desire to wait and want to continue waiting mm -hmm. what would you say to them to encourage them maybe women who are kind of like going up in their age and their phone their clock is ticking and they feel as if they need to just get this over with and just settle what would you say? Those are two separate questions. I know that's yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. questions. So the first question would be, what would you say to women who have either fallen or who are still waiting to encourage them to continue? Uh, I'd say it's worth the wait. It's absolutely worth it. You know, I, I shared that at 25, I thought I was going to be married and, you know, it would have been easier at that time because it's, you know, not as much time mm -hmm. that you're having to wait. But having gone through this journey and trusted God the whole way through and God to have now delivered the person that I know is the one for me is like I just know God shined on me and I just I know that our future is going to be bright because of it and it's only going to be better just because of the weight um, and just honoring God in that way so in your journey trust the process and know that this is a journey that God is honoring continue to be diligent about it know that you're shining mm -hmm. even if it doesn't seem like it and it is difficult that there are other people around you who need to see someone like mm -hmm. you who's deciding to you know go about this hard task and be diligent about it and do it with a smile there are people who go through this journey and they're like oh my god I'm just <laughs> struggling and you know woe is me but to Go through it with joy. I feel like that that speaks to, you know, just your faith and, you know, the God that's on the inside of you. Allow him to shine through you through this journey and just embrace it. Like, yeah. it's not a horrible thing. You know, you will it's not, not die. Yeah, it's not a curse. <laughs> it's, it's a great journey and it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Like, the partner I have now, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Jesus, you definitely did this. Aww. He is so amazing. That's amazing. So what about for the clock is ticking camp? What would you the clock is ticking? Uh, Maybe women who are feeling as if I'm getting up there in my age, I need to get married, I'm just going to settle. Like, what would you, how would you encourage them to not settle and to just continue the good fight? 
I felt that way, you know, because I'm 32, of course. And so when 30 hit, I wasn't with my, my bo now boyfriend um, at that time. And so at 30, you know, there's my parents and just everyone's like, Mary, when are you getting married? And because I have a twin, it's like, what in the world? You know, there's all this comparison. But God's timing is perfect. He knows what he's doing. He will get the person to you. And I feel like he'll make up for the time that mm. you feel like you missed out on. You, you didn't miss anything. Like, you're right on schedule. That's, that's, that's what God kept whispering in my ear. Like, you're on schedule. That's Don't amazing. feel as though, you know, time is running out. You know, you know your biological clock is ticking Chicken. and all that. Like, yeah, I'm going to take care of it. I'll that's make up good. for it. That's so encouraging. Goodness. That's so encouraging. Because there's so many women, especially in Christian culture and the Christian community, that are still waiting, yeah. you know? I feel like there's this huge population of Christian women and there's like yeah. this little bitty population of Christian men, so it's kind of hard Absolutely. to get that right fit and that, you know, that right connection with people. But I think this is so encouraging just to share your story and to continue to share your story on your channel and on, you know, on whatever you can speak on. Yeah. And I think that's pretty awesome. So thank you so much, Mary, for being here. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience? I'd also like to say for those who may feel as though, because there's this notion of having to put yourself out there, mm -hmm. you know, during the wait, that during this process, you know, you should be going out, you mm -hmm. should be doing all these different things. Because people would tell me, you know, you need to make yourself visible. And I would always say to them, you know, if God has to go to the ends of the earth to get my husband to me, he will do that. I can stay in this house every single day. Not that I'm doing that, but I can stay in the house every day. And he's going to get my husband to me. And so with my now boyfriend, Gerard, um, we actually met on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was so, like, unconventional. <laughs> but God can use the craziest things. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And mm -hmm. so in that, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. You can meet a very from a very small town it doesn't matter where you are god will get the person to you and while you wait i remember reading an article maybe it was a devotional from um, joyce myers that talked about the waiting process and it really just helped to shape my perspective on waiting um in this devotional she talked about when you're waiting wait with a servant mentality mm -hmm. she kind of gave the comparison of um, a waitress mm -hmm. you know they are while they're waiting they're actually working yeah you know so get busy with purpose you know actually work during the process and then also as you're waiting a waitress has to be very hospitable. Mm -hmm. you know she has to have a certain countenance in order to be able to serve properly yeah. so while you're waiting work make sure that you are joyous you mm -hmm. know you are happy during the process you know you're embracing the process and you know be a servant you know other people need to hear your your story mm -hmm. you know and your struggles and just like whatever it is that you're dealing with you know pray for others mm -hmm. you know encourage others on your job you know during this wait you need to embrace the process and you know how you wait also determines how long you wait so wait well that's just my <laughs> encouragement and know that it's worth it it's mm -hmm. so worth it that's awesome. Well, thank you so You're much, welcome. Mary, for being here. Um, she's blessed me, y'all, and I just got engaged, but I'm still so encouraged. I'm just like, okay, you better speak on this. You better. I loved having you today, and I'm so glad you were able to make it. I was able to be here. Well, thank you so awesome. much. I'm going to link all of Mary's information in our description bar below, her social media, her channel, her website, everything you need to know about her will be down there. So make sure you check it out and contact her if you want to. Please if you have any do. questions that you feel are not answered here, you can always feel free to slide in them DMs or email DMs <laughs> and ask her. So as always, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and I will see you next time on Crystal's Corner. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Woo!